We're starting right now on the final and I will put it on Google Classroom or actually I did just put it on Google Classroom. If I have to take this video and load it on YouTube, I can. The first part of it, answer the following questions, use the back of the paper if you need more room. Okay, the first one, the first eight questions, and there's only like 32, so about a fourth of it is right here, one eighth of an inch in decimal, okay? Remember, whenever you need to convert a decimal to a fraction, you can just divide the numerator by the denominator, okay? You probably know that you have a calculator on your phone, so you can just go for one eighth. One divided by eight is 0.125, okay, that's one eighth. Two eighths then, two eighths reduces to a quarter, that's 0.250, think of like money, a quarter, 25 cents, 0 0.250, okay? And if you remember that every eighth is 125,000, so you go 125, 250, three eighths, 0.375, four eighths, which reduces to a half, 0 0.50, 50 cents, okay? 0.625, add another 125 to it, is five eighths. Six uh, eighths reduces to three quarters, that is 0 0.750. Seven eighths, 0 0.875. I don't have it on this one. Uh, obviously, eight eighths is one full, but I should add on here a sixteenth of an inch. I usually put that one for extra credit, so I'll just write extra. Uh, a sixteenth of an inch. You can go one divided by sixteen is uh, 0 0.0. 0 0.0625, okay? 0 0.0625, that's a 16th of an inch. And the way I look at it is, if you look at all of these, like money, that'd be like 12 cents, 25 cents, 37 cents, 50. Well, a 16th of an inch is a half of an eighth, so half of 12 and a half would be 0 0.0625 or 625, okay? Metric system and the prefixes for them. Prefixes for the metric system, KHD, remember King Henry died Monday drinking chocolate milk, or King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk, kilometer or kilometer, that's a thousand meters, hecta, think like a hundred, that's a hundred meters, D, deca, that's 10 meters, think like a decade, uh, and then U is the unit, it can be meter, liter, or gram, meter for distance, liter for volume, like a two liter bottle of pop, okay? And then um, meter, liter, gram, of course, for weight. And then the other three are decimeters, centimeters, millimeters. What are the base units for the standard system? SAE, what they call Society of America um, Engineers or Imperial System, and the prefixes for them, okay? The easy one is weight, ounces, pounds, tons. 16 ounces and a pound, 2,000, pounds and a ton, okay, OPT. Uh, IFYM, inches, feet, yards, miles, okay, 12 inches and a foot, three feet in a yard, 1,760 yards in a mile. Uh, I should also put on there, it's also 5,280 feet, if you, you wanna know that. For volume, ounces, cups, pints, quarts, gallons, okay? Eight ounces in a cup, two cups and a pint, two pints and a quart, four quarts and a gallon. Two types of screwdrivers. This one just came up yesterday. A kid asked to repair something. He said, what kind of screwdrivers does this take? And I said, there's regular and Phillips, the two main ones. Of course, you have Torx heads, Robertson's, Allen wrench heads, okay? Uh, but the, the standard one, how is air pressure measured? PSI, pounds per square inch. Which way do you turn the top of a bolt to tighten it and which way to loosen it? Righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, in most cases. You may notice like if you do a pedal on a bicycle, the left pedals reverse threads so that the bearings ever tighten up, it does not wind itself out and you have your pedal fall off, okay? What are two classifications of woods? Hardwoods and softwoods, also known as conifers, and deciduous. I'm double checking to make sure we're recording here and where I'm at for time. We're about 444 and we're about halfway done already. Uh, hardwoods and softwoods for the two classifications of woods. Hardwoods have leaves. Softwoods, another name for them is conifers, which means cone bearing. They have cones or needles. 
okay? You should know softwoods because Washington is the evergreen state, which are softwoods. Is a two by four really two by four? Why or why not? No, it is not two by four. It's one and a half by three and a half, uh, mainly because it's sanded and it is dried in a kiln, which shrinks it up. Two main types of hand saws, a rip saw used to cut with the grain. Okay, wood works best when you're cutting with the grain. Um, the same thing like when you sand it, try to go with the grain whenever possible. A cross cut saw for cutting across the grain. How is sandpaper labeled? Grit, okay, grit. I used to think it was grit meant the how many little pebbles of sand per square inch, but it actually means it fell through a screen with that many openings per square inch, okay, but close enough. You should just know the higher the number, the smaller the grit, so there's more of them in a square inch. So like uh, a 1,000 grit is very smooth. 36 grit, 72 grit, 80 grit is much rougher. Three safety rule apply to most machines. You have eye protection, keep your fingers away from the cutting path. Every one of these machines is meant to modify the, the shape of the wood, which means it could modify the shape of your fingers. Okay, so fingers away from the cutting path, drilling paths, sawing path, just keep them out of the way. Unplug the machine before making adjustments or repairs. Eye protection. Eye protection, I usually say for power tools, hand tools, you mainly don't need them unless you're doing like chiseling or something that you're gonna have wood flying. What's a three-dimensional drawing called? It is a pictorial, pictorial, like a picture, okay? That covers all of them. Uh, some people say 3D, but that includes isometric, oblique, perspectives. Then we get just a few questions in flight. Explain the Wright Brothers' contribution to flight. The four forces of flight and the three axes of control. Four forces of flight. Well, we should say, first of all, the Wright Brothers' contribution to flight, they basically added the motor and they added wing warping. They added that roll where one wing goes up and one wing goes down uh, by the ailerons, which is... Uh, on the wing itself, and then on the back of the wing, of course, you have the rudder, which is more of a flat turn. And then to take you up and down the pitch, uh, which is controlled by the elevator on the horizontal axis, okay? So four forces of flight, lift takes you up, gravity holds you down, drag holds you back, thrust takes you forward. The three axis of control, pitch, roll, and yaw, Okay, explain Bernoulli's principle that allows an airplane to fly. The faster air moves, the less pressure it has. So the air going over the top of the wing, since it's a longer distance, it moves much faster. And the air on the bottom of the wing is lower. So if you think about this, this one right here, the faster air moves, the less pressure it has. The air going over the top is moving much faster. The air on the bottom, it's a straight shot. So the air goes slower. So it has more pressure pushing up on the bottom of the wing. That's creating the lift. It won't just happen though, if the plane's not moving forward through the air. You have to get that difference in pressure. There's a really good Bill Nye the Science guy on that one. Um, explain uh, Newton's third law. Like that's with jet engines. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, for a four stroke engine, three things an engine needs to start. To start, not to keep running. Some people say oil, and I go, let's start without oil. But as a general rule, there's always exceptions, you know. Uh, but generally, you need gas, air, and spark, and it spells out G A S. You gotta have gas or fuel, you have to have air, oxygen, and you have to have spark to ignite it. Explain the four stroke engine. By that, I mean what are the four strokes? Intake is when the piston comes down, the intake valve is open. Compression, piston goes up, compressing that fuel and air. Power stroke is when the spark plug ignites that fuel air mixture, forcing the piston down. And it's just like you pushing down on the pedal of a bike, making you go, that's the power stroke. The last stroke is the exhaust stroke where the exhaust valve opens, exhaust goes out through the exhaust pipe. Last things on here, the marketing concepts, explain the difference between customers and consumers. Customers buy it, consumers use it. Name the five P's of marketing, product, promotion, place, price, 
And I add that fifth one, people. Give examples of wants and needs in your life. Answers vary on that. Some people say, you know, uh, they, they generally as a need, there's a thing called the Maslow's hierarchies of need. What do you need? You need oxygen, you need air, you need water, you need food. And then, you know, go down this triangle, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Uh, kind of interesting, if you're ever interested in that, look it up. And then it goes down to, to the basic ones, you know, the difference between wants and needs. I always say when you're marketing something, it has to be something that people want or something that people need, okay? If no one wants it and no one needs it, no one buys it, okay? Explain why mechanical drawing is called a universal language and why it's called the language of industry. It's a mechanical drawing because it uses tools. Just like a mechanic uses tools to work on a car, okay? Mechanical drawing is using tools to do the drawing. Universal language, because it's used everywhere in the world. We could do a drawing here in the United States, send it over to Japan or China, and done, okay? Uh, there's about three other questions. You get five skips. So some of these questions, like we haven't really talked about on electrical, we do a little bit in tech. What is Ohm's law? Two things you should know about electricity. Ohm's law is the law of electrical voltage equals current times resistance. Voltage, so if something's 120 volts, like our household outlets are 120 volt AC, um, and then there's AC and DC. AC, alternating current, that's the one that Nikola Tesla came up with. DC, direct current, okay? And um, so voltage equals current times resistance. 120 volts generally is what a house is, regular plug-ins. That's 120 volt AC, I should add that on there. I don't have AC on there, but AC was a Nikola Tesla came up with. DC was Thomas Edison, direct current. Why is a plumber called a plumber? What side and color is the cold water? Here again, just a little bit on plumbing. Plumber's called a plumber because he's a worker of lead. Okay, and, and, and lead on the periodic table, I think it's 83 or 84, is uh, PB. So a plumber was a worker of lead. If you haven't heard me say that, it usually comes up when we're talking about pencils with lead in them. It's not really lead though, it's graphite. Just met a student the other day whose parents were plumbers and she said she taught them this, that uh, about a plumber being a plumber because he's a worker of lead, okay? And in the old days then, back in the Roman time, they, the plumbers, they were very high tech. They had water in their houses, the toilets, sinks, but all the pipes were made from lead because lead was a very malleable, soft metal. They could form it very easily. They still have been using lead for like plumbing and like soldering joints and stuff, but it's poisonous. And back then, they didn't know that they were dying off of uh, lead poisoning. It's not like back then you went to the doctor and they said, oh, you got lead poisoning, okay? Uh, what side and color is the cold water? should be cold water should be on the the right side it should be the blue with hot being the red two plumbing systems in a house you got your water supply which is the fresh water coming in and you got your sewer with the water going out the dirty water okay uh what does a trap under a sink do trap is like a u-shaped thing it's actually called a p-trap but it's a u-shaped thing under a sink and it um uh, it's really meant to trap the water in there so the smell from the sewer does not back up into the house. A lot of people think that little U-shaped trap thing under sink is to trap if you drop something in the sink, that's usually where you can recover it from. If you were to lose your wedding ring and it went down the sink, it usually will stay in that trap for a while. And you know, until too much water rushes by, but usually that's the first thing and people think that's a trap because it traps things you drop in the sink. But it's generally to trap the smell and keep water there to where the smell doesn't back up. Uh, if you ever have a, a sink or a floor drain that's really smelly, you dump a little water in there and uh, my floor drains in the basement that don't get used much. When we go to Alaska, we come back and the basement always stinks. Well, you gotta dump water in there to keep that smell from the sewer, the methane, it's actually even flammable, it can blow up. Uh, you dump a little water in there and it, it uh, sits in there to keep the smell from coming out. Little n Another little trick you can do is put just a little bit of vegetable oil, like Wesson oil on there, dump it in, and it creates a sheen across the top, and, and that will uh, keep the water from evaporating, drying out the trap. Newer houses have a thing called a trap primer, where they prime it whenever you use a sink or something, or a toilet, 
he, he, he shoots water in there to keep it primed. And then the last bit here, did I check you off on the following? Did you do your marketing chapters, your project? How many drawings did you do? What grade do you think you deserve in this class? Is there anything you think I should add to this test? For example, one time a kid said, I think we should do simple machines, you know, like a lever. Um, 